No matter what tech stack you're using, deploying your project to a remote server is never an easy task. How you do things depends on a few factors, such as who your audience is, the type of server you're deploying to, and your server's capabilities. You'll have to assess and decide on each of these factors yourself, but let's talk about each of them in a bit more detail to help you understand which deployment strategy is best for you. Sometimes, all we're doing is developing a proof of concept to show our teammates or managers. For these kind of non-production facing situations, it's easier to keep our deployment process quick and simple. We don't have to worry about optimization or speed because the most important aspect is the functionality. When developing an Angular 2 application, the client makes a bunch of small requests for individual files which are assembled as necessary and then displayed to the user. This is known as just-in-time or JIT compilation. Deployment files are full of comments and white space for easy reading and debugging. This, coupled with the fact that each file can spend more time communicating with the server than it actually does transferring data, can lead to unwanted loading times and strain on the server if there's a lot of people trying to access it concurrently. But does it actually matter? Depending on the life cycle of your project, it may not. The second factor to consider is what kind of server you're deploying to and its capabilities. Does it support tools such as Docker? What kind of memory and CPU specs does it have? If you have limitations, Angular provides some tools and techniques that we can look at to help reduce the number of requests and size of your responses. One useful optimization strategy is called Ahead of Time or AOT compilation. When you build your project ahead of time, the compiler bundles and concatenates the code and libraries together and inlines the HTML templates and style sheets within the application JavaScript. This leads to faster loading times as the browser downloads a pre-compiled version of the application with less AJAX requests because of the inline style sheets and templates. The Angular framework size is also smaller because there's no need to download the compiler libraries which make up about half of it. Finally, Compiling ahead of time means you catch errors earlier and the obfuscated code increases security as it hides logic from the user and minimizes opportunities for injection attacks. So now we've understood the options we have available to us, let's look at how to execute on a couple of different options. First, we'll look at how to do the simplest deployment, publishing a project to a server directly out of the development environment. Then, we'll look at how to deploy an ahead of time compiled project. We're going to create a simple node droplet running on Ubuntu 16 to test our deployments on. We're going to SSH into the server and clone our project and run it manually. In a production environment, you'd want to use a tool like Capistrano to automate your deployments. You'd also want to set up a new user with sudo access, but for the purpose of this demo, we'll just use root. Now our droplet's installed, let's SSH in, set up our environment and clone our project. First, let's install a few global packages to make sure our project runs. Execute npm i-g typescript and angular cli. Now we can clone our repo and install our local dependencies.
A droplet's running behind a firewall, so let's enable port 4200, which is Angular CLI's development port. Run UFW, allow 4200. Now we can use Angular CLI's serve command to get our project running. We're going to pass the host argument and set it to 0.0.0.0, which will allow us to view our project remotely. So we'll run ng serve dash dash host equals 0.0.0.0. Great, our application's running but it's using just-in-time compilation to compile and run everything on the fly. This is fine if you're showing a proof of concept internally, but isn't ideal for production. So let's build our project ahead of time and serve that using the HTTP server package. First, let's install HTTP server globally. Run npm i-g http server. Now we can use the ng-build command to compile our project. We'll pass the AOT flag to optimize our code. Finally, we can use HTTP server to serve the static files in the disk folder. By default, HTTP server runs in the foreground, outputting logs to the terminal. We want to keep these logs, but ideally we want it running in the background, so let's pipe the output to a log file. We're also going to pass a port argument to make it serve on port 80. Our project is now production ready. Awesome. By looking at the load times of these two versions side by side, we can see how much of a difference it makes compiling ahead of time. The server is under much less stress, which means our application benefits from a huge performance boost. If we want to stop our server, we can get the PID of the HTTP server instance by running ps-eaf and then add a pipe, then grep HTTP dash server. Then we can run the kill command with that PID. In this series, we've learned the basics of creating and deploying an Angular 2 project using Angular CLI, but we've barely scratched the surface of what's possible. This project has given us a great foundation on which to build and test new things. We'll be using the to-do application we've created in future videos and expand on it to learn some more advanced techniques such as observables and NGRX, but go ahead, branch off and be amazing. If you like this series, subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on the cool new things we'll learn in the future. Thanks for watching.